Being an associate doctor, the good, the bad, the ugly of it for me in my own personal experience shaped how I did start with associates. However, I will say the first few associates that I had, I had no idea what I was doing. I didn't have a framework. I didn't have a methodology. I didn't have a structure. I had a growing practice and I needed help. Hello and welcome to the Remarkable CEO Podcast, a show dedicated to chiropractors who want to transform their job into a business so that they can have a remarkable practice as part of a remarkable life, not instead of one. With your hosts, Dr. Pete Camiolo and Dr. Stephen Franzen. Welcome back to another episode of the Remarkable CEO Podcast. I'm Dr. Pete Camiolo. And I'm Dr. Stephen Franzen. And remember, Doc, you don't have to be awesome at everything. You just have to build a team that's awesome at everything. Hey, welcome back to this series that we've been doing on the trifecta, and we're digging into the three roles, the CEO role, the COO role, and now the associate doctor role. You saw from the title of this episode, this is about the associate doctor. If you missed the two episodes leading up to this episode, I'm going to ask you to press pause, go back, listen to those two episodes, because understanding these three roles and how they work well together is absolutely so important. And if you've already heard those episodes and you're ready for this one, Get ready to dig in. Doc, I'm really excited because we see that the trend and where chiropractic is going, we really have to understand having a better understanding of the associate role, the significance of this role, and how to make this a win-win-win relationship. And we're going to be digging into the best practices, things we've learned over the years, uh, things we've not done well, and things that we have done well. And if you've also been listening to this podcast, you've heard in several episodes before when we were meeting with Dr. Mark Mao with Cairo Matchmakers talking about the associate doctor relationship as well. That'd be a really good one to go back and listen to if you haven't listened to it. Because again, we have you have a better understanding of the dynamic of hiring and how to even know who's the right associate to bring into your, into your practice. So they, they got into that in that episode, uh, Dr. Mark Mao and Dr. Steven. So um, dev- definitely double back and check into that. But today, in this episode, we're going to be diving into uh, the associate doctor, and actually understand there are different types of associate doctors. You may not have thought about that. You may have just said there is this thing called an associate doctor, and it's not. It's not that simple. And we're not going to be able to go all the layers of depth, doc, but we are going to cover at a high level and give you a better understanding of the significance and dynamic of this relationship. So, Dr. Stephen, really excited to be digging into this because I know as part of the remarkable CEO journey, as we talk about going from building into scaling one of the criteria to transition from that build into scale season is bringing in an associate doctor. Yeah, Dr. Pete, this is such a, an important conversation. It's such a complex conversation. It's so incredibly difficult to get this right, but it's an absolutely critical conversation if you do want to create that remarkable business that supports the remarkable life. You guys have heard us talk about having a remarkable practice as part of a remarkable life. This is an ascension. This takes it next level. This trifecta conversation takes it to the remarkable business level. We're literally getting into the DNA of what it takes to have a remarkable business. Now, we've talked about uh, you becoming the moving from owner operator to becoming the CEO. We've talked about the ascension of your office manager into the role of the remarkable COO, the CWO, the chief operations officer. And now we're going to we're going to get on the third leg of that stool, so to speak, the third circle or domain of the trifecta, and that is the remarkable associate doctor, right? So how to take this uh, player into your house or take this player, he or she who's on your team already, or maybe you have multiple associate doctors right now, and how to optimize this and how to make sure that you have a successful associate doctor relationship so that's highly productive and it's a win, 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 right? It's a win for you as the owner. It's a win for them as the talent. And it's a win for the practice, which means for the community, which means for chiropractic. If we do this right, it's such a win for chiropractic. It's such a win for the owner, such a win for the talent or for the associate doctor. If it's not done well, man, it's just such a lose, lose, lose. It's terrible for chiropractic, right? And 67% of these associate doctor relationships go sideways. And that is a terrible statistic, right? So I want you to hear me when I say this. Um, This is an incredibly difficult thing to do well, but it's such an impactful thing to get right. And there, and you don't have to make it up as you go. So when we, when we, when we describe this process, I want you just to rest assured that there, uh, there are systems to follow. You don't have to make it up as you go. You don't have to get lucky. This is a science and it's reproducible. 
we have between Dr. Pete and I, we have over 60 associate doctors in our history, and we have had 600 of our clients bring in successful associate doctor relationships and see them flourish. So we speak from uh, experience. And like I like to say from scar tissue, because we've screwed this up every way to Sunday, right? So we have figured this out how to do it right. And we figured out how to make it reproducible. So Dr. Pete, super excited to get into this conversation on how to get this remarkable associate doctor relationship, right? Yeah, doc. And I want to start, I want to start back at the beginning of even my journey. And doc, I don't know if you want to, you want to hit on this, but this is what I started as an associate doctor. Actually, I started before an associate doctor in a chiropractic practice. I started actually as a CA, working as a CA before I even going to chiropractic college. So I, I actually was, I had the honor and privilege of being in pretty much every role in a chiropractic practice. I was front desk check-in CA. I was a tech CA. Then I was a intern. Then I was an associate. And then I was you know, an owner, and then I became the CEO. And now I get to do coaching, right? So you're just wearing a lot of different hats within the context of being in the profession. Um, and, and I, but in my associate role in being an associate, what I recognized was in the practice that I was at, had a great experience. I had one year as being an associate, but there was never, um, there was no associate that ever had been there before. And so it was very clear that there was no plan. There was no structure. There was no real strategy. It was just come on in and let's see, see what happens kind of thing. And, and, and I experienced that right away that, th- that there was no plan to this. Like there was really no strategy, there was no organization. And, you know, I'm a pretty resilient guy. So I just, I made the most of it, to be honest. And um, I feel like I got a lot out of that experience because I chose to get a lot out of that experience. However, I, I don't believe that that's the way that it should be. Now, I think that for me, being an associate before having associates really taught me a lot about how I wanted to do things different. I will say that. I will say that being an associate doctor, the good, the bad, the ugly of it, uh, for me in my own personal experience, shaped how I did start with associates. However, I will say the first few associates that I had, I had no idea what I was doing. Honestly, I didn't have a framework. I didn't have a methodology. I didn't have a structure. I had a growing practice and I needed help. (laughs) That's what I had. And I had... Um, I had an ability to bring in an associate, but I didn't know what I was doing. So, you know, you say you don't know what you don't know. Um, and sometimes what you don't know will hurt you and other people. And that's what we want to save. We want to save you and our profession. Unfortunately, the reality is, is this, there are a lot of chiropractors out of work right now. There's a lot of chiropractors that could be functioning as chiropractic doctors. And many of them would be a great associate doctors in a great practice. However, two things. Number one, the doctors who are owners who could bring in associates aren't prepared to effectively do that and do that well. Number two, the associate doctors don't know that this role, the significance of that role and understand that it that they belong in a profession working in, in this environment. And, and so there's, there's a disconnection right now that I hope that we solve in this next five to 10 years. I really believe that. And so this is significant. You've heard from Dr. Mark Mao and the Cairo Matchmakers team what they're setting up us up to do, which is succeed in this process, CEO. As you're hearing me, or I'm talking to you as a CEO, they're, they're we're here to help you succeed in this. You're not alone. That's number one. Do not try to do this on your own and alone. We've all done it that way. And like you said, you might get lucky, but that's not that's not a system. That's not a process. That's not remarkable, okay? And, and, and so number one is you're not alone. So groups like Cairo Matchmakers are here for you. Number two, it, that's the beginning. You've got to look, look at this as a long-term thing, a long-game relationship. And that's why we're here to help you as well as a remarkable practice, as a remarkable CEO. We're here to help you with this. So you're not alone. So if you've been feeling that and you're feeling like, man, I failed at the associate thing. I'm just done with that. I want to speak to you. I think we've, we've t- talked to you before. Don't give up. Your, your town needs you to continue to grow. Our profession needs you to continue to grow. The doctors that are, are looking for a great opportunity to work need you to sh- step up as the CEO of your business and do this right. So, Dr. Steven, I know that this is, um, you know, you, you've been always called the systems guy for a reason, which it's one of your one of your many geniuses, but it's a genius that you have. And so I love how um, you've, you've really identified, really, there's a, there is a spectrum of associates. And I don't know if we're going to get into that today. I think we are. Uh, but I like to talk about this because I think it's it, it's it's important for docs. I think it really opens up our minds to be able to see, oh, okay, cool. So there's an actual spectrum of associates. Um, and then you need to identify, obviously, which ones belong with you. But um, it's not as simple as just, I need an associate. 
Yeah, it, I mean, this is um, incredibly deep. Um, we are going to start really, you know, at a high level, 30,000 feet, and then we're going to drill down. And this is going to actually be a two-part series um, on associate doctors that you and I are going to be doing. So for now, let me just pull it all the way back. Um, I'm going to go back to where you started, Dr. Pete, which is historically, um, I was an intern first, and then I was an associate doctor, and then I owned my own practice and have actually taken my you know, gone through all four seasons of the chiropractic career, launch, build, scale, exit. So I've, I've run the gamut, man. I've run the gamut. Uh, and when I'm in, you know, in an environment where I'm speaking to students or new grads or doctors who are just ready for what's next, um, I actually teach them um, uh, what we call our next program, which is we, we showcase what are the 10 uh, possible tracks, and this just 10 of many more, but the 10 possible tracks that we've identified and that we promote for, let's say, a student graduating or somebody who's ready to move into the next stage of their career, and it's called the NEXT program. So I literally just taught this to a bunch of Australian uh, 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 students and new grads. Uh, there's literally 10 tracks that we teach that say, listen, there's more than one way to be successful as a chiropractor, right? So unfortunately, we've been propagating this misinformation that, you know, in order to be a successful chiropractor, you need to be the owner of a clinic, right? And that's the successful chiro chiropractor. And then there's everyone else, right? There's the, there's the associates, there's the independent contractors, there's the locums, there's all the second class citizens. And man, what a mis stake that is, what a disservice that is to um, chiropractic and to humanity. And we know that that's absolutely not true. So as you said, there's a whole spectrum of human beings. So the, you know, DCs will have one thing in common, they're human beings, right? There's a whole spectrum of human beings as far as how people are hardwired to behave, right? And this is true for chiropractors and it may be amplified for chiropractors, right? So when we look across this spectrum, it's really important to understand how people are made up, how they're hardwired. You know, if you're listening to this call right now, you're most likely on one side of the spectrum, right? If you're attracted to the, to the CEO call, right? If you want to learn more about becoming a remarkable CEO, guess what? You're probably on the far left-hand side of that spectrum. Term, right. So this is what we call the business builder. Right. So but the far right hand side of the bell curve is what we call the caregiver. Right. So these are doctors who are hardwired to be awesome doctors. Right. So, you know what, we've all been on the journey as students where we spent two, three, four years studying chiropractic, but somewhere around the second, maybe third year as we start seeing that graduation on the horizon. Uh, for a lot of people, they, they have a bit of what we call an HSM, right? A holy shit moment where they realize, wow, I got to figure out what I'm doing next. Like, where am I going next? And it looks like I'm going to have to learn how to be a business owner, right? And that can be like a, you know, th there's, a, there's an emotion behind that, right? And if you're listening to this call right now, I bet your emotion was, oh yeah, <laughs> like I'm so psyched, right? Because you're hardwired to be an entrepreneur. You're hardwired to be a business owner, right? And then the other 75% of your classmates, they were saying, oh shit, <laughs> right? So I don't know what, what to do. I don't know how to do it. I don't know if I want to do that, right? But I guess I have to do it or I have to become that quote unquote second class citizen. So Pete, this is a big deal, right? So we uh, we have teased this apart. We've created these avatars, which we're gonna get into when we talk a little bit more uh, about this later on in this episode, but definitely unpacking it deeper when we talk about compensation models. So you're right, there is a whole spectrum. Right now, You know, speaking as an entrepreneur, what I knew is when I got out of school, I knew I wanted to own my own business. I knew I wanted to own my own practice. It wasn't my practice. My first practice was not my first business. I knew I knew how to build a business, right? So I knew I was a good communicator, right? So I also, uh, I, I felt like, you know what? I had the chops to lead a team, right? So I, I felt like I had all those things. So when I came out of school, what was important to me was to find, you know, an opportunity where I could accelerate my clinical skills. Like I was a really committed um, gondroid, right? Gonstead clinician. So when I came out of school looking for an internship, it was, you know, what I was looking for was somebody to help me with my analysis and my uh, case management and my adjusting skills. So I did an internship in Arkansas with a genius chiropractor who was a tremendous pain in the ass, but he helped me learn how to read x-rays. He helped me learn how to read a nervoscope and how to check a spine and find subluxation. That's why I was there. That was my big why. It wasn't for any other reason but for that. And then I had took an intern, excuse me, um, I took an associateship position in Virginia. In fact, I talked this brilliant guy into letting me come and be an associate in his office. He had no interest in having an associate doctor, but I just wanted to learn from him because I thought he was the best adjuster in the world. So I had a very clear intention around why I wanted to be 
in that practice and why I was really ready to commit a year of my life in my early career to accelerate my clinical skills. So why am I starting here? I'm starting here because I want you guys to recognize that the why is so important for both the owner and the talent. The why, why do you want to bring on an associate doctor if you're an owner? If you own a clinic and you're thinking about bringing an associate doctor, the first place we have to start with is why. And if you're listening to this and you're thinking, you know what, I want to become an associate doctor when I graduate or in my next role, the question is, is why? Why do you want to be an associate doctor? And what's important to you? What are you trying to accomplish, right? So let's get back to the owner conversation and say, why do you want to bring on an associate doctor? That's just critical. You have to understand exactly what does success look like to you? Why do you want to bring an associate doctor into your office, right? So what do you want them to do? What do you want their responsibilities to be, right? So that's where we start, Dr. Pete. It's the vision. And the vision answers the question, why do you want to bring on an associate doctor? What is your objective? What are you trying to accomplish? Okay, let's take a quick break and talk about Cairo Matchmakers. Cairo Matchmakers will help you find the right person for the job. If you're looking to hire the ideal chiropractic assistant, Cairo Matchmakers will help you find the specific person missing from your team so that you can get back to using your talents to serve more people. Or if you're looking to hire the ideal associate doctor, CMM can help. Cairo Matchmakers helps chiropractors like you find the ideal associate doctor to unlock your practice potential and get you the freedom that you desire. To learn more, go to chiromatchmakers.com. And now let's jump right back into our conversation. Yeah, it's a wonderful uh, place to start. It is the place to start. And, you know, we talk about, you know, and we've covered this in previous episodes, the four things you you have to get right, you know, with every player on your team, you've got to get the right person in the right role, doing the right work the right way. This actually goes into the, the bucket of the first right is you have to know your why, right? Because we say that when you find the right person, there's two things that they that 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 qualify them. Number one is they share your core values. Okay. Part of your core values, those are those are expressed through how I live my life, how I run my business. You know, I don't I don't need you to tell me your core values. I just need to observe you, really. Because by observation, I see what someone values. Now, you could give me the word that, 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 that you want it to be. Maybe that's an aspiration. There's difference between aspirational values and the ones you actually are doing. You call them, I think, the wish list. Um, but, but the reality is, is, and that's great. I have those, and you should too. We should be always aspiring to a higher level of being and doing, right? So the vision is what is what's pulling you and in order for you to go where you need to go on your journey it would it would look like for me to actually get there someone has to come with me does that make sense so if i think about the vision doc and you're talking about the why so we're pulled we're pulled by our purpose so that why is out in front of us so i wake up and why am I up? Why am I getting up? Why am I going through this motion of getting ready for work and going off to the, the why is pulling you. And so if your why is pulling you and you have clarity on what your why is, and that's, that's one of the first things we have to do is get clear on it. Is that as you're being pulled forward, that it would, it, it makes sense within the context of your why that someone is going to have to come with you to be able to achieve the why that's how you'll know that there is an associate doctor that's needed here because my why, as I'm pulled by my, my why, I there has to be more people for me to be able because I can never do this alone. So in other words, they talk about if your why is not big enough, then there's no need for anybody to come with you. So you have to have a bigger why, bigger than what? Bigger than what you could ever accomplish on your own. The why has to be big to be able to make room for other people with their why to come with you. Does that make sense? That the why is a container that contains you and 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 everything that makes up who you are and other people and what makes up them, so that we journey together. So if someone's going to come with you, so the your why it becomes a shared why because when you share your vision, this is what success looks like to me. This is what's important now, next, and ultimately. And when I hear that and I see that, I need to come with that because. I'm moved to come with that. That associate relationship should say, yes, I want to be a part of that. Because when I think about in my why, 
your why, my why, there's an alignment there, right? And so then when we look at our core values and says, do we share these values? And we're not going to get into that today, but then those are some of the context things that we share our, our purpose. We have this why I'm pulled by this and you are also as well. And we share values. Now you may be the right person. I'm not saying you are, you may be. There's, there's some more things that we need to check here because I think we want to get this right. You do want to get this right. That to me is, Doc, this is so important. We have to, as CEOs, stay here. One of your first objectives is vision casting. This applies to hiring. This applies to training. This applies to building a remarkable team. Vision. You have to have vision. And vision means there's clarity. And there's conviction. Right? And a lot of times there's uncertainty going into hiring. There is. Um, so we want to help bring some of that to you. But you've got to have some clarity. And you got to have a level of conviction moving forward. So let's pull this thing in. Let's pull it from 30,000 feet. Let's pull it down to 10,000 feet, right? So when we talk about specifically the associate doctor question mark, why do you want to hire an associate doctor? What are you trying to accomplish? That why has got to be big enough because you got to be able to tolerate the brain damage that's, come, that's going to come with bringing another professional into your business. At the end of the day, this is going to cause you stress. No question about it. This is difficult. Relationships are difficult, right? So this is a difficult relationship to get right. So the why, you have to start really clear and you've got to own it. Why do I want to bring an associate doctor in? And this is really critical game. We're staying here for a second because doctors skip over this piece, right? So what are you trying to accomplish? And, and it, very often the answers sound like this. I want to expand. I want to create greater capacity in the practice. I want to serve more people. I want to make a bigger impact and a greater income. Great, great answer. Okay. Or I need to claw back some time freedom. Okay, great. What does that mean? I've got to free up some of my time. I can't be the only person bending over bodies all day long adjusting because now I'm so busy. I don't have enough time to really get busy. Right. So it's like, or, you know, it's maybe it's exposure. You know, it's like, man, I'm the only one delivering value in my practice. God forbid anything ever happens to me or I have to go on maternity leave or, you know, it's just like, it's like, ultimately it's like, I can't tolerate this level of exposure in my business, right? So you've got to really identify a gang. Exactly. Why do you want to bring, why do you want to bring an associate doctor into your house? Okay. So that's the objective. That's the big why. What are we trying to accomplish? Then you ask, how are we going to accomplish that? Which is, you know, what are you going to do and what are they going to do? You're bringing in a professional into the house, right? So they're a chiropractor. You might say to yourself, you know, um, well, I know what I'm really good at and strong at. This is what I really need them to be able to do well, right? So you got to be able to ask the questions like, you know, is it attraction? Do you want them to be somebody who's great at marketing and generating leads, internal, external, digital leads? Or is it conversion? Man, I, you know what? I'd love to have somebody who's in here who could help me with the conversion process. I need somebody who's hardwired to be a great salesperson, right? Or maybe it's like, no, man, you know what? I got those things. I just need some help adjusting all these people. I need somebody to help me with the education and adjusting our patients, checking spines and changing minds. I need somebody helping me bending over these bodies. If I could get somebody to adjust a third or two thirds of these people and free me up, that would be awesome. If they could just find a great adjuster, somebody with a big heart and great hands, somebody who's got fast feet and good work ethic that can educate and adjust our patients. That's what I'm looking for, right? So Dr. Pete, it's so important that we very, get very clear. What is the outcome we're trying to drive and what role do we want that associate doctor to play in achieving that outcome? Yeah, I, I, I loved how you painted the picture there because hopefully as you're listening to this, you know, as the CEO, you've identified even doc from what you just said, who you are and where you're at. Why would you bring in an associate? I think you, you covered a lot of the reasons why someone would bring them in. Doc, I think that the next question that I often get is when, right? I think a lot of doctors ask themselves, okay, I, I think I have a feeling that I know why I want to bring in an associate. Now I'm wondering when is the right time, whether you're bringing on your first associate or you have one associate and when to bring on a second associate. I think that's a that's an often uh, a frequent conversation that comes up with doctors, especially with doctors, I think bringing on their first associate doctor is when do you know that it's the right time? If you know the reason why you wanna bring on an associate, you you look at the, the examples that you just, you shared there. I guess the question is when, and I think for a lot of doctors, um, the, the when, in many ways, they, they think it maybe is a financial thing or it's a volume thing, but there are other aspects to this. Um, and one example would be looking at your current team, right? Looking at your current systems, 
looking at what you've built in your current model. Some people, doctors may be busy and they're quote unquote ready to be an associate because they're making the, the revenue is there. But if you were to bring in a doctor into that situation, let's just call it a situation uh, where the things are not in order, you are not prepared to bring on a doctor, a professional who you don't have a system in place for training and onboarding and developing and retaining and equipping. And there's no accountability. There's no systems. There's not a, there's not a strong model there to support another professional and in a, in a really healthy and professional way then that's a, that's a when issue. And doc, I'm going to tell you, that's probably one of the more common subluxations that I see is that the doctor may be successful, meaning their volume is kind of what we might say in the right place, their revenues are there, but their house is in, in order. And that I, I don't, I do not support bringing in associates to a disorderly unstructured, unsystematized home. I, I don't, because I, what I feel like is you're, it's a disservice to them. To the to a associate doctor, and that to me is a it still is a big issue. I think in in our profession right oh, now. Oh, absolutely, Doctor Pete. What you're describing there is the classic couple that's struggling with their marriage. So they say, "Hey, you know what? Let's have a child. That'll fix everything, right?" So it's like the last thing you want to do if your house is in disarray at your practice is to say, "Let me bring in an associate doctor because you know what? We're struggling. We're languishing. We're not going. We're not growing. Maybe I'll throw an associate doctor in the mix, and that'll fix everything." Anybody ever do that before? Or man, my our our practice has been on the downturn. Turn, right. We've been losing oxygen, but the balloon is going down. Right. So let me bring in an associate doctor. Right. So we get this question all the time. You know, when am I ready to bring on an associate doctor, my first associate doctor? And I say that there's really six criteria that you've got to meet. So the first one, Dr. B, you already touched on it, which is you got to have everything systematized, period. OK, so, yeah, I know I'm the systems guy. So, of course, that's the first thing I'm going to say, but you have to have it systematized. Things cannot be scalable. OK, they can't you cannot delegate. And you cannot have quality control. You can't deliver predictable excellence and predictable outcomes if things aren't systematized, right? So either systematize everything or people are going to be making it up as they go, okay? So systematize everything so that you can delegate and train people and hold them accountable to excellence, right? So number two, you got to make sure that you have an established team, okay? So that established team means that, you know, your team is not in disarray. You don't have people coming and going and turning over and it's like there's no maturity in your team, right? So you have to have stability in your team before you start introducing another professional, right? So stabilize your team. Number three is establishing a training culture, okay? So you want to make sure that there is a culture of training in your business because if you bring in a professional, a new grad and an old dog doc doesn't matter, you're going to need to train them up in your systems, right? So you have to make sure that everybody... The biggest point of exposure when you have multiple doctors is discontinuity, okay? So you cannot have one doctor doing one thing and another doctor doing another thing, right? So number one, you'll drive your patients crazy, but number two, you'll drive your team crazy, okay? Create confusion and confusion never converts. So we want to make sure that we have continuity across the board, and that's going to be established through your training culture, right? Number four, um, you want to make sure that you as a doctor, that you as a mentor, you as a leader, that you like to train and develop associate doctors. Listen, if you're gonna take this person into your house and you're gonna be the senior doc and they're gonna be the junior doc on whatever level, you've gotta wanna mentor doctors. You just have to enjoy that process. If other chiropractors just drive you nuts, guess what? This is gonna be struggle for you. It's gonna be awful for everybody, right? So you have to ask yourself, do I like to work with others? Do you play well with others, (laughs) all right? So I had 39 associate doctors and I know why they were there. They were there because I love training and developing doctors. I love it. That's exactly what I love spending my time doing. It's what I do now professionally, right? So I love training and developing doctors. You don't have to love it the way Dr. Pete and I do, but you can't hate it, okay? Number five, you've got to make sure that you can control the flow of new patients into the clinic. This is probably one of the biggest factors, right? So you got to recognize that, you know, at the end of the day, you've got to have, you're going to have another mouth to feed, so to speak. So whether you're bringing that person in and you're expecting them to be a business builder, you got to know that you're going to be hiring a business builder. And, you know, by the way, as if you listen to our conversation with Dr. Mark Mao from Chiro Matchmakers, this is not a guessing game either. You've got to be able to objectively assess and test a person to make sure that they're hardwired to be a business builder, right? So if you are expecting that person to be able to bring in their own new patients, you better make sure they're hardwired to be able to do that well, or it's going to fail. And it's going to drive you crazy in the process, right? So it's going to be awful for everybody. 
Now, if you know, hey, listen, I know that the new patients coming into the office, that's going to be my responsibility. I'm good at attraction and conversion, or I have some systems like my digital marketing's dialed in, or I've got this just awesome check in CEO who's a natural promoter who just, you know, we have huge referrals coming into the practice. Whatever it is, you've got to be able to say, listen, I know that my marketing is like an accelerator pedal and I can depress that pedal and put the pedal to the metal and bring in new patients at will, right? You've got to know that you can bring in new patients through the front door. Okay. And then the last thing that's very much related to the last one, you've got to be able to afford to be able to have a chiropractor in your office, right? So to bring in another associate doctor, you've got to be able to afford it. Okay. And you've got to be able to pay these doctors well. We're going to do on our next episode, the second half of this, which is going to be on compensation and compensation models. We'll talk about this further, but you've got to be able to afford to pay the doctor well, right? So at the end of the day, we all have four limited resources, time, energy, focus, and money. And being a CEO, you recognize that it's your job to marshal those four limited resources of your organization, the time, the energy, the focus, and money. Not just yours, but everybody in the organization. But right now, when we're having this conversation about bringing in an associate doctor, very often, the conversation that we end up having with the doctor is like, listen, you are going to spend your money to buy their time, energy, and focus as an associate doctor to free up your time, energy, and focus. I'm going to say that again. As the owner, as the CEO, you're going to hire an associate doctor with your money. You're going to use your money to buy their time, energy, and focus, to free up your time, energy, and focus. The question is, is what are you going to do with your freed up time, energy, and focus? And what is the highest and best use of that time, energy, and focus that you just bought? Is it going to be, I'm going to spend more time in marketing. I'm going to get out into the community more, generate more new patients. I'm going to really drill drill down and work with my digital marketing expert team. I'm going to generate more inflow of new patient leads into the practice. No, I'm going to focus more on the conversion process, or maybe I'm going to focus more on developing my team to create more scalability and durability, right? Or maybe it's, no, I'm going to jump in, spend more time in my CEO role, working with my COO and be more of a business leader. I want to run this enterprise, right? So I hope you guys hear what I'm saying because it's literally it's a multi-million dollar per year question. What is the highest and best use of your time? And you to act like a CEO, a CEO recognizes that they're going to use their money to buy other people's time, energy, and focus to free up their time, energy, and focus. And the most important question you can ask yourself is what is the highest and best use of my time, energy, and focus that I'm freeing up? Some of you might be saying to yourself, you know what? I just want to be able to spend more time with my family. Awesome. Is it worth the money that you're going to pay that associate doctor? I hope your answer is yes, but you have to come to peace with that. Is it going to be, I want to be able to go on vacations more. Is it going to be, well, I just, what I'm doing is I'm trying to free myself up so I can start another business or an additional business. I've got something else that I'm doing, hopefully inside of chiropractic, right? Because that's what I did personally. I used my money to buy the time, energy, and focus of multiple associate doctors to free me up so that at one point I was in the office one shift a week. After 22 years of being in there seven shifts a week, serving hundreds of people a day, what I recognized was I was young and strong and I still wanted to make a bigger impact in chiropractic. So I had to free myself up. I had to free up my time, energy, and focus so that I could build the remarkable practice, for example, right? So what do you want to do with that time, energy, and focus, Dr. Pete? Yeah, I think this is a really important place for us to to pause and we're going to pick it up on our next episode because- what I want you to do as I'm listening, Dr. Steven, to you is for you to think about those six things that, that Dr. Steven, you just went through to think about those things. And, and where are you at when, when it comes to those six things? Because maybe you're listening to this episode and you're, you're thinking, when do I need to bring in an associate? Because I know some of you who are listening to this episode. I know some of you. And I know some of you are in the journey of getting ready to bring on associates um, because we've had conversations Um and some of you are clients and you love listening to this podcast. So that was just, it was just a really good, um, you know, exercise to think through and process each one of those six, six things and take inventory on where are you at? Just even starting with number one, systematizing everything. I think that's one of the areas that, you know, many of us are, there's an exposure there. So we need to get that. We need to get our house in order. And so one of the takeaways is, you know, think through those six things and process as a CEO and consider, are you prepared? Are you ready to bring it on an associate? 
If so, then when we pick up on our conversation next week, we're going to get into the, the types of associates and even compensation. I think you're going to have a better understanding of, okay, I've now taken inventory. I know why I want to bring an associate. That was the first step from today's podcast. Number two is the answering the question when. So if you can answer both those questions, why and when, then you're ready for our next conversation, which is going to be about actually the types of associates that you're going to bring on and compensation, how to actually take care of these amazing doctors. So uh, let's. Uh, yeah, Dr. B, let me just jump in there because I, I want to make sure that we didn't feel, I don't want to feel like we've just created a whole bunch of questions for them and left them with questions, right? So I just want to make sure that they understand that these are problems that can be solved, right? These are questions that can be answered and you do not have to do this on your own. So from a high level, these, you know, these solutions are there for you. So, you know, we've heard from Kyra Matchmakers. Kyra Matchmakers job is to help you create greater clarity around exactly what are you trying to accomplish, right? So you're thinking about hiring an associate or another associate, great. Exactly why do you want to do that? that that's part of the service of Kyra Matchmakers. Create clarity from you and challenge you to get that real clarity. What do you want to accomplish? And what do you want the doctor's role to be in achieving that, right? So what is the objective and what do you want the associate doctor to do to achieve that objective and help you identify exactly what is the what we call the avatar of the doctor you're looking to hire, right? So that's really critically important. And then they go and help you find that doctor. So Kyra Matchmakers is one of those services that help you right up to the hire, then you hire them, right? And then on the other side of the hire, this is where we jump in, in the remarkable practice. And with, if, when it comes to specifically to the associate doctors, we have the remarkable associate doctor program, which is, it's a 16 module course, which teaches you the 12 steps to creating the remarkable associate doctor um, relationship. Everything from from the finding and hiring part of it to the uh, the onboarding piece of it to the training and equipping piece of it to the developing and retaining piece of it to the planning and the exit strategy around it. All of that is there for you in the Remarkable Associate Doctor Program. And then of course, on the backside of that is the Remarkable CEO Program, which is of course, teaches you how to make that ascension from owner operator to CEO. So not only are you able to go from job to business and get into scale, but to go from scaling to scaling well in doing this right. So docs, we're going to put some links down below for you to be able to learn more about any and all of these programs. We just want you to know that we've come alongside you. We see the arc of this entire process. And there is a program, there's a system that is reproducible, that's been proven all around the world, regardless of your personality, regardless of what your objectives are and what you're, what you're trying to accomplish. This is a science. It's an incredibly tricky thing to get right, but you can do it. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Remarkable CEO Podcast. Remember, what the world needs now is chiropractic. And what chiropractic needs now is more successful chiropractors. If you like this podcast, please subscribe, share with a friend, and leave us a review. And if you'd like to connect with us personally, direct message us on Facebook, LinkedIn, or Instagram. Now go and be remarkable. Remarkable.